Hello, my name is Stephanie Howe, and I'm going to go over how to create a tracking log. So tracking logs um, can be created at the beginning of the year, and then they can be used throughout the year. It helps students with goal setting. So a lot of students will enter their information throughout one day, and then over time, it just keeps adding up. Um, so you can set different goals with your students and different awards as they meet those goals. And again, it does take a lot of time at the start of the year to set up, but once it's created, it will be minimal work. Um, there is a couple of things that you will need to do throughout the year to ensure it is sending emails and such, but it is minimal compared to the start of the year. So what you're going to first need is your, um, this Google form. So it's going to ask you to make a copy. This one is for book. It's called the book log. And once it's up there, it went ahead and made a copy. You can rename it. You are going to enter your students' names. You're gonna change whatever you need to change. So if you teach math, you might have um, like how many math problems did your, sol did your student solve um, within a certain period. Um, come up with different challenges that you could use for your own classroom. Or maybe how many minutes a week did they get on a certain program? Um, that can be up to you on how you want to do that. You're also going to need their emails. So it, like I kind of use this sheet will be sent to them through Autocrat and it's going to just be an email for students. So if there's carrots, this is going to be replaced with the actual student's name. So based on the book log, it's going to take the student's name as they enter it. So that's kind of why I type it, because I get students that will type their name incorrectly. Um, so that can be up to you. You could have students type their name, but it does have to be correct on the Google Sheet. Um, once you get a Google Sheet, for it to add students' names. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just going to type my name as student1. I'm going to leave student2 as student2. I'm going to leave everything the way I have it. If you make any changes here, you will need to change them here. Feel free to change any of the colors, the font, if you do not like it, to fit your classroom. You can also add your own image or GIF or whatever you would like to do with your students. Um, you also might need to change the date, like this is last year's date. I might need to update it to 19. Um, maybe I want my students, instead of 20 total pages, I want them to read 30, and so on. Again, anything in the carrots is going to pull from the Google Sheet. So if you do not want total number of pages, you might do total number of math problems. You would just change the words to match your Google form. <clears throat> Once you have your Google form, you're going to want to make sure that in your settings, you turn it on so it is restricted to your school district and to collect email addresses. If you do not have this option because your email might not be with a domain, make sure you collect email addresses. That way students have to type in their email and make sure they're typing them incorrectly or it will not send an email to them. So we're going to go ahead and take our Google form. So go ahead and hit pause if you need to create your Google form or edit the Google form that I have given you. And you're going to fill this out twice. So I'm going to go to preview and I'm going to pick my name. I'm just going to do testing, testing. We're going to say I read two pages and I read two words and I'm going to hit submit. I'm going to do another one. So I'm going to do my name and this is just to make sure our Google form is pulling data for what we're about to set up. This time I read three pages, and we'll do three. Once you have filled it out twice, you're going to open up a Google Sheet. So I'm going to go back to my editing one, go to Responses, and I'm going to open my Sheet. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a black line and we're going to begin typing student name, email address, number of pages, and number of words on our Google Sheet. So I like to put a black line here 
just so I don't get confused as I'm creating my Google Sheet. So again, it was student name, email address. I'm gonna do total number of pages and total number of words. Now you get into the difficult part of adding a summary. So we're adding our first formula. This formula is going to take these two lines and add them up to create five because it's the same person filling out the form. You will need to type every single one of your students' names on this form. This is why it does take some time for you to create your Google form. However, you could copy and paste it if you have the information in another spreadsheet um, you could do that. I always, at the beginning of the year, send out just a generic spreadsheet with student's name, email address, lunch code, um, different information that I knew I would need. And you could just copy and paste that, and that is honestly probably the best way to do it. That way you have everybody's information in one place. If you need to edit because they did make a mistake, you could just do that for that student. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out, and we're going to keep our Google spreadsheet here. I'm going to make this smaller real quick. Okay, so the formula. This is kind of where it does get tricky. I am going to go over to total number pages and make sure that box is checked. I am then right up here going to click sum if. Oh. So write equals it sum if, so do not forget that equal sign. I want it to equal the email from the form. So I'm just going to go to the email address from the form. And I want it to equal this email address that I entered myself or you copied and pasted. And then I want it to equal the number of pages. And so you want to make sure that you can type this in exactly, make sure the commas are exactly where they are. And so back to my Google form, you can see it's adding the total number of pages, five. So three plus two is five. So what this is saying is row B, so my email addresses from B, so from the Google form, have to equal the J from the ones that I typed in, I use email addresses, you could use student names. We have some student names that are the same. And so I just like to use email addresses because every single one of our students have a different email address. Um, your district might be different. And so if it was different, you might do student names. And if that was the case, you might put CC comma II. Okay, that's just up to you. And then I want it to be adding column F, which is our number of pages. And you can see that I get five there. Our next step is we're gonna do the exact same thing to our next part on our Google form. So now, instead of total number of pages, I want total number of words. So I'm gonna do equals sum if, and I now want it to get the email address from here, comma. I want it to get the email address from here, comma, and now I wanted to get the number of words. Okay, and you can see that it's adding up five. Oh, I need to undo, because I accidentally did something. So again, if I would type in something else, it's gonna populate. So equals sum if, email from form, this should be a comma, email from J, comma, add number of words. Okay, so that's what this formula right here is telling it to do. If I went back to my Google form, then let's do it again as a student. <clears throat> I 
This time I read five pages and I did four numbers of words. So now when I go back to my Google form, we need to just give it a couple seconds so it can update. Sometimes it might help to refresh. So as you can see, it pulled the information from the Google form. And now the black dots, these are what the students imported. There is an add-on called copy down if you want it to copy down those black lines. Um, I'm sure it would work. But as you can see, my numbers are going increasing because I'm adding more data to this information. So our next step is to create a new tab. So the reason we want to create a new tab is because this Google form, your student information is going to come down here because of all the new responses that will be added to their information. So you could copy and paste that if you wish. That would be kind of up to you. That's not something that I would want to do. So what you would want to do is you just add a new tab. And I just call this like class one. You could do class two. You can. I just add all students, so all classes to one Google Form. You could do multiple Google Forms, that would be up to you. And then from here, I'm just gonna take these, these columns, because I need the student name, number, total number of words, and I'm just gonna paste these here. I am gonna get rid of these formulas because they're not gonna work because I'm on a new tab. So this is the next formula we're going to need. So on here, you're going to type equals query. And then we're going to go to our tab one. And we're going to just click, make sure you have the right student aligned with the person. And then we're going to, again, drag our formula down and just double check your students to ensure the same student has the same amount of points. And you're going to do it again. This time, I'm going to go to number of words. <clears throat> Again, drag it down and just make sure all your students are aligning. This just gives you a quick look at your students rather than sorting through this sheet. You won't probably need this sheet after it's set up. You'll probably use this sheet more often than the one before. So again, and then you go ahead and set up your autocrat. If you've never done AutoCAD before, it is pretty simple. Um, it just walks you through. So you just go to Add-ons, AutoCAD. If you need AutoCAD, you're gonna go to Get Add-ons. And you're gonna launch. AutoCAD does kind of take a while to load sometimes, um, depending on how much your data is. So this is why you would want um, different things, but you would just follow these steps. And if you need help setting up AutoCAD, just let me know and I can create another video or I could come in and help you. Um, but you can see like this says duplicate email addresses. So I might put email address tab one, email address tab two, just to fix that. And you just, you just follow the steps. So you would hit next, you'd pick a template. So this is the template that you would want to add. And then here's the little carrots. So total number of words, total number of pages. You want it to click all of this. And I want it to pull my form one responses. I actually could do class two responses. It might help. Um, but for today, I'm going to keep it um, response one. Just play around with it and see which one works better. This is where I would want the student's name. And you have to kind of type it exactly, so I like to copy and paste here. Ah. And then I might say book log. And if there is a space after that name, you want to make sure you include it. Um, I want it to be a PDF because I don't want my students to edit it. I suggest you put it into a folder. Um, I do not have any folders set up because this is a 
form, but I would set up a folder, folder that says student book log email addresses. You won't need them, but I would just keep them in a folder in case a parent ever asks for it. You have it in a folder rather than it's just collecting to your drive. I want to share this document and I want it to be a PDF and I want to send it to my students. So I wanted to send it to their email addresses. So again, carrots, copy and paste that email address and then you're going to do the carrots again. You could put yourself, but if you don't want 70 some emails, I would not. And here you're just going to type hello. You're going to type a message, something along the lines um, with congratulations, you've earned so many points or congratulations, please view your reward. Um, whatever you want to say. You can also use the carrots to personalize it if you want it to say hello and then the student's name. And then if you want it to run on a trigger, I would say no, just because you are going to have to delete these and then you'll save it. <clears throat> We're just going to do here. And again, it tells you where there's issues. Autocrat's pretty easy to use, but if you do need help, just let me know. And then you hit the play button and it should run. It will tell you if there's an error with your job. And it's going to create another four different um, columns. And it will take a couple minutes that first time setting up. But now you can see what the students will receive in their email address. So it says my name, how many books I've read. I need to get 20 number of books and 20 number of words by this date or to earn extra recess. So I'm really close on my total number of pages, but my number of words I need to up. So I know how many work I need to do from now until October. And every student, it will create this for every single student. And on your Google form, you just have to click the different link. Um, these don't have student names. So, but the first time I would have it just run through. And then what you're going to do the next time is once the students have earned more points, you're going to go ahead and delete these and have it run again um, so that you have an updated list. Some other things that I've seen, so once the students have their data, they can create these different infographics about their end of year reflections. So I really liked um, this one on Twitter. There's some other examples in the Google slide deck that will be attached. And you can just see their examples that they have in here. Um, they talk about their favorite book, their different reading levels and stuff like that. And then there's other ways that you could track like the grid method. So there's a post on there if you want more information on how to use different formative assessments. Again, if you need any assistance, please let me know. Thank